please. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. Joyous light of glory, of the immortal. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness with the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Beloved Father in heaven, you are blessed for granting us the word of your grace in which you have revealed to us your will concerning our salvation. Teach us to love your word, diligently to hear and willing 
patiently to learn it, that guided by this lamp, our feet may walk in the way of everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning at verse 15. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the names of other gods, that same prophet shall die. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his prophets 
to his people of old by the prophets. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, it's a joy to be with you again this evening. It's a real treat for me to go out and visit a sister congregation and a special treat to be with Martini. So thank you so very much for receiving me with such kindness. A prophet like Moses. I will raise up from among you a prophet like Moses. Well, God sure knows we need one. But who? Who is this prophet? Moses, the greatest of all the Old Testament prophets, would not enter the promised land of Canaan. There was an incident at Mount Hor with the rock and the staff. In Numbers chapter 20, you hear about it, and oh, do we get an earful. We hear how the congregation in the wilderness cried out, how they wished they were still back in Egypt, how they longed for the food and the water that they had back in slavery. They complained to Moses and Aaron, oh, it's the same old things. They complained about the food and the lack of water to drink. So Moses was instructed to take his rod and to assemble the congregation by the rocks. And there he would speak to the rock so that the precious water would flow. In speaking, God would give his precious gift. But what did Moses do? Well, he took his rod, he gathered the congregation, and instead of speaking to the rock, he addressed the congregation. And then in one dramatic moment, Moses struck the rock, not once, but two times. And then the water mercifully gushed forth. Well, what's the problem here? They got the water. Isn't that what's important? Well, by not following directions, Moses, the greatest of the Old Testament prophets, made it look like the miracle was his own doing. That grand gesture took away from the modest way that God would provide for his people. In speaking to the congregation, they would see that God would work. Instead of seeing how God works through his word, Moses made it look like it worked through his grand gestures. As a result, Moses was marked from that day, Moses' leadership was in decline. He would not have the privilege to lead the people into the promised land. Moses would die. And that would mean for a time of change. But change is certainly not what the people want. Who would lead them? Who would mediate between God and man? Who will be our new Moses? After all, God knows we need one. Well, if you were to sweep through the scriptures, you would see that the people of Israel never fared well without a strong leader. Well, truth be told, they, didn't, they weren't that faithful even when they had a strong leader. But now they're losing Moses. Who would it be that would be raised up to fill such sandals. Would it be Joshua? Well, sort of. But then again, there's no prophet like the prophet Moses. The last chapter of Deuteronomy records Moses' death and Joshua's installation into the ministry. So it says, And there has not risen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. 
None like him for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. And for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. But we heard just tonight that God said he would raise up one, a prophet like Moses. So who is this prophet? Let's bring things a little closer to home. I think this is a pattern that we see throughout all of history. It's campaign season. We have a different P word that we're looking for. We're looking for a president soon. We want a leader who strikes the right tone with foreign officials. We want one who intimidates our foes and instills confidence in our friends. We want a president who will right all the wrongs, who will lead the people as he parts the political waters. We want a president who can stimulate the economy in order to provide for us all of our needs of bread and meat. We want a president who can navigate us through this barren wilderness. After all, God knows we need a leader, a good one. Can we bring it even home a little closer? As circuit visitor interim, I attended one of your call uh, committee meetings, and I can confirm that not much has changed since the exodus. After all, we want the right kind of pastor, one who's charismatic with the great personality, one who appeals to youth and the elderly and everyone in between. We want a pastor who will sympathize with our failures and inspire us with his great preaching. We want a pastor who lifts us up when we're down and comforts us when we are sad. After all, God knows we need a pastor like that. But who can ascend to the heavens to look upon God and live? No one. Who among us can perform great signs and wonders, not just cheap parlor tricks? No one. Maybe you hold the belief that one day you will be like that prophet. But let's first dash those infantile hopes upon the rocks. You see, there is no earthly man who can be a prophet like Moses. Not Martin Luther, not Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, no one. No earthly man can be a prophet like Moses. Yet God knows we need one. Indeed, God does know that we need one. And God has raised up for us a prophet like Moses from among the people of Israel. Not a mere man, but a God-man. The God-man, Jesus Christ. He is a prophet like Moses who stands as a mediator between God and man. He is a prophet like Moses who carries out all manner of signs and wonders. Our Lord calms the storms and walks upon the waters. He heals the sick and restores sight to the blind. He drives out demons and faces down Satan in the wilderness. Oh yes, he is a prophet like Moses and more. Our prophet, priest, and king overcomes sin and death and the grave. And he leads his people past the shores of the Jordan River and into the promised land of everlasting light, life. This new prophet has bore our sins. He's bore our sorrows, absorbing God's wrath for all of our sins. This new priest has even gone behind the temple curtain. He's done it once and for all, pouring his very own blood upon the mercy seat. And this new king has established an everlasting kingdom of which you, yes, you, dear citizens, of God's church baptized into Christ. You are the most cherished of citizens. And this prophet, like Moses, is our prophet, priest, and king, Jesus Christ. And God knows we needed this one. God raised up many prophets, 
in the line that were fulfilled in Christ Jesus. He's raised up many great world leaders. Many more have filled the office of pastor in Christ church. But folks, none of them, none of them are prophets like Moses because God knows we need someone more. We need Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please stand. Now the peace that passes all understanding guards your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For President Harrison and President Stuckwish, for all pastors in Christ, and for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For President Biden, for all public servants, 
for all the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation and those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For Pastor Brown and his congregations in New Mexico and the saints here at Martini as they pray for their pastor, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Please be seated. Oh, what a joy to see each and every one of you this evening. And thank you so much for providing dinner earlier. It's really a joy to know that that's, well, it's always well fed when you come and visit. So thank you so much. Uh, we are praying for you over at St. Paul, looking forward to hearing good things from Pastor Brown. Hopefully, we pray this is the one, and we'll have a, I'll have a new brother that we can uh, serve our Lord 
in our common ministry over at Central Lutheran Church. Again, a joy to see each and every one of you. I want to point out we do have a special visitor tonight. I do know that uh, uh, Pastor Stuckwish here, Indiana District President, uh, has come to visit us this evening. And uh, it's a joy to see each of you. Good night. We'll close with our final hymn.